I was on Slack and uh, was it this morning? Yesterday. This morning. Somebody asked, it was yesterday. What is the point of an NFT? What is the point of this crypto? And it reminds me a little bit of a conversation a couple years ago. What is the point of the cloud? Why is everybody moving to Amazon? Why are we stopping to run our own servers? And then, you know, you have back for, well, why are they moving to Java? Like, we're doing things in C and CGI or something like that. And I think there's, um, so something happens to us as we go through this technology. There's a new thing after new thing after new thing. And they fail, and then they fail, and then they fail. And once in a while, people have more to take off. I think that, are you on camera? I can't, no, I'm walking around, I'm like, move my face, I can't, I can't stand still. So, um, we have some space, just. Like from couch. around the orange couch over to the front. Packaging their own curriculum. I ran the curriculum team, ran the software team. One time we were six employees. We were big and then small and big. But we were down to six employees and we wrote this code. And um, last year, just about a year ago, I left. I joined a company that was going to build a live streaming platform for Broadway shows. And we had this, we did some theaters, we did Broadway shows, we did regional shows. It was pretty cool, I kind of built this whole platform myself, and then I brought in my friend Zach to kind of finish things up in the front end, and Zach and I were in the one-two team, and it was pretty cool. Um, however, the CEO lost a little bit of interest because all she was doing was talking to unions, lawyers, creative people who wanted things a certain way based on the stage. They didn't understand the dynamics of streaming, um, lighting people. And we had kind of had to buy our way into the market. And so here we were not having any fun because there's so many barriers. So the CEO said, OK, well, I went to for a board meeting, February 2nd, my birthday this year. And she said, I think instead of doing Broadway live streaming, we're going to do NFTs. <laughs> and, <laughs> you know, I'm like, hey, whatever, whatever. <laughs> I'm game. Let's learn something new and pull some NFTs. And so we did some NFTs, we built a platform, we learned the three. And thinking about this calendar and how we, the challenge right here we're having. Figuring out how to manage this data. This first is not in the room, this first is not in the room. How do we get this on there? How do we get on there? Just got me thinking a little bit after I saw the question about NFTs and value of crypto. And I think if you put the NFTs away, you put all the coins away, you kind of think about what's really going on in the core of the blockchain and think beyond where we are today and where this might head off in the future to some interesting. Things. So I thought together we could design a distributed system, do a little thought experiment. I love thinking about what if we use us? What if we use microservices? What if we did microservices? And going through all these different thought patterns of designing a system, designing a team, whatever. And I, I sometimes I go through just staring, I'm just staring, I'm just staring, but they on the wrong machine or I'm walking in the dark and I shouldn't work in there. But anyway, what if we wanted to think about how to manage this data in a different way? So first of all, why would we want to give all of our data to Google? Simple solution is to create a Google account. Why do we want Google to control what we're doing? Why do we want to have Google see all of our data and manage that? You know, we're technologists. We should be able to create something on our own. But then I'll lose it. But I don't know. This guy right here, he's going to run this web service that we're going to build together on his laptop. And I know he has bad Wi-Fi, and I don't trust him to keep this system up and running. And I don't know if I really trust this guy over here, and that guy in the back is my brother. 
And I think if someone came in and gave him a twenty dollar bill, he would go change the dates on his calendar to make your meetup. I would. So what's the price of a good joke? So anyway, um, we have zero trust this, nobody trusts each other. However, we want to be able to come together and reach consensus on what the dates of each meetup are. And so in that system, we need a protocol. How do we know that if someone requests a meetup, that that gets registered by multiple people running multiple servers so they can check their data? And that's really where the blockchain comes in. And so Luke has a private key, and he's going to use that private key to sign a transaction. And he's going to throw it in the bowl. Whoever wants to process that transaction goes and grabs it, pulls it into their system, and here's the thing. If Luke wants that transaction to be processed, he has to throw some money in the bowl with it. The person that processes that transaction gets money that is put in right there. When you start thinking about how that works on a little bit different scale, maybe we get Joel to sponsor all of this. Joel's going to take a thousand bucks and say he's going to sponsor meetings. Luke wants to put something on the calendar. We don't trust him. Right, Luke, you put a dollar in, you put your event on the calendar. If you get five people to show up, you get a dollar back. If you get 10 people to show up, you get two dollars. And so when you start thinking about this distributed system, someone's funding it and putting money in for a better cause, because Joel believes in this. And then we want to hand out rewards to the people running the data, running the nodes, processing the transactions. And we also want to give incentives out to the people who are actually participating by putting their meetings up here and running the meetings. Hopefully that makes a little bit of sense. I made a lot of this up as I'm going based on kind of what's already in my head. And um, don't have slides to play anything. So, how do you do it? I'm sorry. <laughs> you can't answer. Uh, my, my coworker is now my dog, and she doesn't care. <laughs> when I worked in the office, I think, Moran was an intern for me for a couple of years, and uh, I don't sit still, and I hit the keyboard really hard. <laughs> So when we think about Web3, um, where it might go, zero trust environment. We have some kind of sponsor who wants to create an environment to make something happen, and they're willing to get money funded. We have individuals who have to pay to have their transactions run, but maybe that sponsor helps them out by getting their money back. So you can't just spam every day of the month and run out of money and you won't get your money back. But if you have a good meetup that's solid, that meets the goal of the sponsor, he's willing to give you some of his stake out. So just a little summary of, of Web3 and um, some things that might turn into our web. Build this video, build this for you. Thank you. I don't NFTs fit into this. NFTs? I uh, thought that was the one here about NFTs. Uh, all right, NFTs. Um, yeah. well, I think in this story, the NFT would be the claim to a calendar date. Oh, yeah, you have the calendar date. Yeah. yeah. And the blockchain would be the transition, transactions yeah. of moving the NFTs around. So I, I was shocked with NFTs when I learned that there was no digital signature of the actual art being recorded on the blockchain to represent. It just blew my mind. I'm like, oh. all right. So it's just points to a link that goes to the image, and that link is susceptible to link rot. Yeah. Or like the image being changed or right. something. Yeah. 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 So like people are spending thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars on a link to a picture. And that picture could be changed, or like rug pulls are very common. All of the NFT makers just get people to sign up for it and get them to send them money, and then they immediately just run away with all of it. Well, I have my theories, but I didn't want to bring down your 
<laughs> so we we also sold we sold eight hundred thousand dollars worth of NFTs with this since we started this project. And uh, as a company, I told someone else that they're like, "Man, I'm still working." <laughs> um, now, are you free to say what those NFTs are? Can, what the tokens I are? Show you, I'll tell you anything. Yeah, I can show him. He's got some. I have one. So. This is probably a whole nother talk, what we're doing and why we're doing it and how we're going to build a business around this. But essentially we want to build around this NFT, we want to like elevate ourselves above an NFT project. We want to become the Yelp, the Rotten Tomatoes, the Google of NFTs. So you come to us, you find the art, the projects, the missions, the things you want to support, and then you can purchase things. So that's what we're building. So here's my NFT, anybody wants to see the best round? So in your case, the NFT are artwork. Our NFT project, so what we did was... It's just a visualization of the pictures. How do I know that you own that NFT? How do I know you own that NFT? Well, he knows it. Yeah, but how do I trust him? His, his platform manages well, there's your trust. Yes, either side. Yeah. So the cool thing about this is if you ignore the picture, there's a transaction recorded on the blockchain that says his wallet address owns token number 3,242 of this NFT collection. And theoretically, that can never be changed because there's so many distributed nodes that all have that data. And it's really hard computationally to change that one home. Now, in that token, is there a URL that points to the actual picture, or is the actual picture in the token in this case? So the data storage on the blockchain is very expensive. And so you don't take a picture and store the picture on the blockchain. You store the picture on a URL. Mm -hmm. And then on the blockchain, all that goes in there is the address of the smart contract that generated the NFT, mm -hmm. the token number, and who owns it. Yeah. And that's all that gets really tracked on chain. And then smart contract has a function that says, give me the URL, the base URL. Mm -hmm. And then it's slash token ID is how we did it. But you can change that. I can change it. You can change, it's not the, you can change the smart contract even though that's written on the blockchain? So the smart contract is code that you put on the blockchain with an interface that you define. If I add a function to my smart, so if I add a function to my smart contract that says set the base URL to X, it has a function that sets the base URL to X. If I don't put that function on there, there's no way to do it. So you write arbitrary code, you put it on the blockchain, it goes out on all those nodes, and when I run a transaction from that code, all the nodes run it and it can verify. There's no randomness. I can't have a random number inside my, my smart contract because it needs to execute that same transaction across any different nodes in a computationally deterministic manner. So it's checksumming? Are the, are the nodes checksumming each other? Um, the smart contract? The, um, yes, essentially. That's why, that's why it can't be random, right? Because if it's, if it's a random value, it wouldn't match. Or yes. If you ran it, and you ran it, and it had a random number in it, it would come up with two different values, and now your two different nodes can't verify that they have the same transaction. Yeah. Is, is it that the blockchain is persisting metadata associated with the entity value, or whether it's an entity or... So is that generally true? Like by saying we're not, like, I'm trying to like, put together, we were not encoding the asset or not. Might you consider it more like a Chinese URL? Uh, references to the image that I might download to so, represent. So first of all, you can put any code you want on the blockchain. And if you happen to do things the right way, the NFT marketplaces will work with your contract. 
I can create up my, I can just make up my own stuff and my own NFT, and it doesn't work for anybody else, but it still tracks ownership of the token. So you can do whatever you want. But if you want to be able to play with other marketplaces and other tools, you kind of have to follow those rules. Interesting thing is there's no standards body. So it's all kind of by convention, the bigger players come together and say, here's the rules, and if you want to follow them, great. If not, your NFT may not be sold. So just to clarify, in the case of your NFT and virtually all other NFTs, the blockchain means Ethereum? Ours is Ethereum. I think there's a growing, I don't know if it's growing. Yes. I, I've been doing NFTs for three months and I'm now an expert. Uh, <laughs> there's, there's, there are other blockchains, 100% that support um, NFTs. Any blockchain that, so Bitcoin, you can't really put code on Bitcoin and run a smart contract. It's not really a smart contract. It's, it's code that you bundle and you put on the blockchain. It stores the code on the blockchain and it executes that code in a virtual machine on the blockchain. Nodes. Bitcoin doesn't have that. All that has is transactions. It doesn't have smart contracts that can execute. So Bitcoin, you can't have an NFT. Theory, right? Yes. It's just. Well, you could have an NFT. You couldn't have the smart contracts in it. Yes. Yes. Is the smart contract what would allow you to move ownership of whatever that the thing about you is NFT from one person to another? Yeah. Feel free. Do you want to see those smart contracts? Because if you see the ad pen, like draft the ad, the application. Yeah, I might need another beer for the show. Yeah. Smart contract. <laughs> Maybe we'll do that another time. I mean, we're pretty much at the end of the time, but I don't care as long as other people. Uh, so I do have, I have more of an abstract question that is philosophical. So if we want to go that route. Yes, um, that's what I want to hear. Okay, because it is like, so my understanding of blockchain and the associated social values that require it to operate are more libertarian in nature, and they align more with free market economics. So in the free association of individuals with carefully defined financial incentives to build things, to, to create a culture, and then furthermore, it's decentralized. Whereas if we talk about the social philosophy of the current Unix, HTTP standard body era is classically liberal in the sense of we're not going to charge royalties for the HTTP protocol or any protocol. We're going to define them. The, the vision of the common, the common, what is it, the, the commons, right? It's, it's, we're building something we're not charging, but some would offer that sledge to an environment where you have highly consolidated economic interests, like Google, Facebook, Amazon, or other private entities that simply are exploiting, perhaps, the, the free common nature. So, A, I guess, are those like rambles? It is it fair to portray like, one of the core social values of blockchain as or libertarian, or, or, or maybe we, we toss that out and say free market individuals trying to align incentives with the creators of that. Like, is that, is that a fair portrayal of kind of the economics? First of all, thank you for asking this question because I love thinking about things from a big picture and a different perspective. Um, 4K, like Joel said, well, what, what is Web3? So web one is anybody can put up a website on the computer and you can do access to each other's website and this university can talk to that university with static content. Mm -hmm. And web two is kind of that centralized control. And so now instead of creating a website, did you not give me a beer? There are kind of many to see what they'll say. Yeah. So um web two is that. That's a, that centralized control. Yeah. So 
yeah. Amazon owns all the servers. Yeah. And and yeah. Facebook owns this, and Google owns this, and all, you know. And then the Web3 is, and this is where I think where that libertarian concepts come in, and there is a, a connection there. Okay, I am in control of my own digital asset. Yeah. And I can choose when I want to sell it. Uh, <laughs> Sell them to him, and yeah. it is a yeah, individual yeah. responsibility over your own asset. Yeah. You know, this is interesting. For some reason, these yeah. company work for hired lawyer before we did our NFT project. Right. to people were making to 
who stuff his own coin. And so a lot of these NFTs, they'll mint the NFTs and they'll just buy them themselves to get the coin, to get the price to go up. And then they'll give them to other people. And there's a lot of there's a lot of scams in the crypto and NFT communities. Is is labeled as art. So if you buy an NFT at a high price, you can sell it to yourself at a low price, keep the asset, take the tax right off of the price. Right. Without actually losing the value of the Yes. And right now in the U.S., that is legal. That's okay. I don't think that's legal. It's not going to take it. Hot, well, that's what it's not legal with our world. That's what the venture capitalists at the meeting in February said. Do you want to say it's legal? Now, I'm fairly certain that would be. I think it's a major fraud if, if, if put up to a lawyer. Well, some of well, them, I think there's probably something in there about self-dealing that they can prove it. It's main goal. It could be, it could be really paid. It could be a really cool system for us all to collaborate and build a distributed calendar so that we can all contribute and create meetups and fund the meetups. And it could be money laundering or selling things, break sanctions, whatever. Uh, you can make a one-time gift to your spouse or Spending a number of money that's tax free. Yeah. There's all sorts of loopholes. Ultimately, for me, uh, like uh, NFTs don't really hold my interest aside from the potential future where that URL could be something other than a GIF or a JPEG. Uh, if it could start being a zip file or Itself is not really sufficient. So you see these web two entities coming in and kind of add the layer of control. So Coinbase. Yeah. Coinbase is a web two company. I go to the website, I use my credit card, I buy it, it goes into their database. They hold my tokens. I don't actually own those tokens on the blockchain until I transfer out of Coinbase. So web two entity. Yeah. Um, what we're doing with our NFT is if you want to go under our website and you want to participate in these help reviews and you want to learn about NFTs, you have to have one of our NFTs. So instead of logging in with the username and password, you log in with your wallet address. We get a digital signature from your wallet address to prove your identity, and then we go on the blockchain to verify that you're still on your NFT. And if you don't have your NFT, we're kicking you out. And if you do have the NFT that you bought, then we're going to let you. But there's the web, the, the website is 100% it's node, it's in the act, it's a web, it's a great support in the world, it's just like in the world. It just has those books. Crypto coins vaguely hold my interest. What really holds my interest is the underlying technology of this period of blockchain. That, but has think about, think about that, that potentially massive future. I agree. And I, like five years ago, uh, I was I was at a, like a FedEx store and uh, I was returning some computer power supply and got off the way or something. And the, the sales guy there being the cash register, uh, he, he he stopped me for a second. It was kind of like you know deep in the shift. He's like, well, let me ask you something. I was like, okay. He's like, I'm a bit of a PC gamer. Why is there such this shortage of video cards right now? And so I've been up for about 48 hours straight, so I was like, all right, let's throw it out. Um, and, and so so I started breaking it down. So, okay, okay, so these guys are mining for crypto with these extremely high-powered video cards, and you know, they're calculating these uh, cryptographic functions upon prime numbers, we get down to this, ultimately, this unique digital asset that uh, is a transaction that we put on the blockchain. And I'm standing there in the FedEx store, and I spontaneously go onto the sidebar of uh, shipping companies. Their whole business, aside from the actual physical transportation of their goods, 
everything on their servers, this transaction, 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 it's all about the GPS coordinates of their particular thing in its food chain, and they're going, there's no reason why this couldn't be decentralized. They, uh, and think about the um, ramifications of that, of, I mean, they have all these people throughout the United States, throughout the world, they're opening up their mobile devices, gotta log into the servers, and it, it's the, I saw the application for distributed blockchain in shipping, and I think it, it could be a huge thing. If they're not exploring it already, it better be. I think IBM is a big cold partner on just that supply chain management and blockchain. So there's, there's definitely, they have to think of it. And that was five years ago. So it, it, it's, it's kind of interesting. I mean, NFTs are like a Beanie Baby or Pokemon card. Yeah. I'm not going to argue that because, I mean, they are. Um, and it, some people love Beanie Babies and love Pokemon. <laughs> and, you know, good, good for them. There's going to be artists supplying them and there's people buying them. And, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. I, I, I don't have an interest in NFTs themselves. Um, I like I like building platforms and engaging users and building companies and, and all of that. But um, I don't know if I care what it is as long as it's not too bad. So do you know what mining, Bitcoin mining actually is? I'm sure you guys know that. So, so normally you take data and you hash it and you come out with a signature, right? So the way Bitcoin works is you start with a signature, and you need to come up with a set of data and hash it down to that signature. And that's what the mining is. And it's very hard to reverse engineer hash. And it, it's kind of cool because they, so here's your signature, and then they put a mask on it, a bit mask. And that controls the difficulty. So if they want to make Bitcoins harder, they add another, they remove a bit from the mask. Now the problem, you have to only find the last eight bits of the signature. To make it easier, you only have to find the next six bits. And that's how the modern of the technology is they maintain a new block every 10 minutes on Bitcoin, because they mess with that. The number of bits of the digital signature that you use to method. But anyway, you hash data, you find, you hash data, you look for other data that matches the signature, and then that becomes block. And then they look at the next block. What they do is they take a hash of the first block, put it in the next block. Hash of this block, put it in the next. And that way, you can't go back and change one in the middle without disrupting the whole calculation hash. So is it kind of saying it's a little bit less? Yeah, absolutely. In my limited understanding. Just like the data structure, right, that has each bit, each point connected to the other, and then you can do things because they're connected. But also you could say it's a cap, right? It's, it's a That's a little bit. And sometimes, sometimes weird things happen, like, maybe he finds a solution, you find a solution at the same time, creates a fork, and now two of those nodes are right. And I can be wrong about that. source. Yeah. Now, because now temporarily there's two blocks that put that different yeah. actions accepted. And then they have a consensus algorithm that says, whichever one of those chains gets the next block first, mm -hmm. wins and then the transactions are canceled. So there's, there's all kinds of really cool algorithms around how they create that consensus between all these different nodes. I would like to learn more about that. It's all algorithms. It's all mathematics with really large integers, so it's just challenging to do unless you've got dedicated. My brother designed to that like graphics process. Unless you have the 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 punchline to my story is uh, so apparently I blew the poor sales guy's mind and walked out. And the very next day, the very next day, uh, my uh, LinkedIn app bleeps and I check it and it's like you've had a new visitor to your profile. 
some poor schmuck who works for FedEx <laughs> in Lancaster, Pennsylvania. I was just like, okay, well, I guess I deserve that. I think here's a good place to end it. Uh, I don't really want to squash the conversation, but my battery's dying. So I'll end it officially and keep talking. So see you next time. Thanks, everybody. So that's a really interesting question.